Hi, and welcome to this energy investment analysis lesson on supplemental measures and decision making. In this lesson, we're going to learn a few different supplemental measures, including the net savings and the IRR. We're going to differentiate between the adjusted internal rate of return and the internal rate of return. And we're going to describe when to use these metrics when making a decision. So first, the net savings, which is just the difference in um, net present value, or in this case, this, this slide uses LCC as the net present value, the life cycle cost. And what you can see here is that when we plug in the base case and the alternative life cycle cost, the life cycle cost of the alternative is lower. So when you subtract them, you get a net savings of um, $69,000 in this case. So when the alternative is lower, that means it's less cost to you. So that means you want to go forward with the project. So um, your net savings would be positive. So, and the highest net savings is the best, is the most economic choice. <clears throat> so if it's negative though, you wouldn't want to go through the project because your base case is, um, that means your costs are lower for your base case than your alternative. So when can we use the net savings? To accept or reject a project, which I just said the criterion, greater than zero we accept, less than zero we reject. Optimal performance, we can use that for. And optimal system design, we can use it for. Think about it like this, performance or system design, we could think um, if we had a bunch of different um, bulb um, options for our um, light fixtures, then we could do that. And then optimal system design, again, if we had multiple HVAC controls strategies or multiple HVAC systems, um, we could look at the net savings of each of them and make a decision based on that. However, we can't use the net savings for project priority. So let's say we have a solar panel project and a light bulb project, um, a relamping project. We couldn't prioritize one or the other due to the net savings. So the adjusted internal rate of return. So basically, this is if you, if you, during your cash flow, um, you, it's the measure of performance of this cash flow as a percentage yield. So you can think about it like if you were to put all this money in a savings account, what percentage that savings account would yield? Okay. So this has a little bit of a caveat. So the adjusted internal rate of return is. Um, when you have when their reinvestment rate so when your cash flow is let's say let's say you got two thousand dollars in year three and you invested it back in if you could invest it back in at um another rate that's not your discount rate then that's an adjusted in internal rate of return however if you can only reinvest it at your discount rate that's a regular old internal rate of return we're not really going to deal too much with adjusted internal rate of return in this class, but I wanted to make you aware of that. So another sort of way of thinking about IRR is that it's the value of the discount rate that makes your net present value equal to zero. So that's the way that we sort of calculate it um, sometimes, but um, sort of a way you can think about it, how, how we get this internal rate of return. So. What, how can we use the internal rate of return? We can use it to accept or reject projects. So, um, but the criterion here is that if the internal rate of return is greater than the discount rate, that's what D is, then we accept it. If it's less than the discount rate, we reject it. Then um, we can't determine optimal performance or optimal system design with internal rate of return. But, now this is the key, we can do project priority. So you can see that sometimes the net savings are used for up here and the IRR is used for down here. The other thing that we want to notice is that meaningful IRR cannot be computed for finance projects. So, so finance projects or projects with all positive cash flows don't really make sense because your net present value is never going to equal zero, um, no matter what discount rate you choose. So there's no IRR for these projects. So, in a sense, this, this means that IRR is not useful at all for many of the solar agreements that, that you're looking at um, in your energy investment analysis. So, net savings should be used instead. 
All right, so the IRR in Excel is actually really easy. Um, it's just IRR is the formula, and you just put your entire cash flow as the argument to that formula. And you can see some examples if you want to click here on the slides and um, go to the cells on that sheet. Go to cell H16 on that sheet. So let's look at two examples. And both examples can be found um, in the two different sheets by clicking that spreadsheet. Um, which upgrade? So the first question is, we have two different options of upgrades. We have a light bulb upgrade, um, and we have three different options for that, incandescent, CFL, or LED. Or we can upgrade our heater. And which would you choose if you could only choose one of them, and why? So for the three different light bulbs, though, which one would you choose and why? So um, for this question, we're assuming we have 10 light bulbs um, we could replace. And um, this increases the net savings by a factor of 10. And the IRR would be the same. So let's look at, again, you can see how I calculate these values in the spreadsheet. But that's the important part is really thinking about how this affects our decision. So which upgrade would you choose if you could only choose one? So if you can only choose one is the key phrase here because that means you have to prioritize the projects. And if you remember, if you look back, the net savings can do everything except for pri prioritize projects. That's where the IRR is good at. So let's go ahead and look. The net savings here um, might be lower than the heating upgrade for the CFL over the incandescent and for the LED over the incandescent. But the IRR is highest here. So when you're looking at project priority, um, you should look at the IRR. So, <clears throat> excuse me, in this case, the IRR is higher with the light bulb replacement. So that's what you want to go with. So now let's look at the three light bulbs. So I'm just doing, um, you know, now we need to th think about the three light bulbs. We have the CFL over the incandescent, the LED over the incandescent. So now you decide to replace the light bulbs. Which one would you choose? Well, here you can't use the IRR because this is optimal design performance. So you have to use the net savings. So in this case, you would use the LED over the incandescent. And thanks for watching. Appreciate it.